Good morning everybody and welcome back to Blue Roy Movies. We're going to do the weekly watches and it's a Saturday. Now, I was going to do it and then set the timer to upload it tomorrow morning, but I thought, what the hell, let's just, let's just do it. We're in the moment. Live the moment, as they say. Let's get on with it. Now, I've got my schedule work-wise through for next month and my Sundays are free. So, as of from next week, for the next few weeks, we'll be back to Sundays. But anyway, enough of that twaddle. Uh, I've watched Seven Things, which isn't bad, considering last weekend I was away for the weekend and never watched a film. So, I've done a bit of catching up. So, without further ado, let's have a look, see what I've been checking out. Now, first up, I started with The Conjuring 2 from this excellent box set I know it's not cheap but if you get the chance to pick this box it'll it's really really good I'm really enjoying them so yeah I watched Conjuring 2 which I think is my favorite Conjuring film and you know what if I was to make a top 10 horror film list which I could do if you wanted me to I think it might just scrape into it because I really like this one uh, it's set in London it's set in the 70s, which appeals to me because I was a kid in the 70s at about the same time as these kids. And when I was a kid of this age, I lived in a house where there's some strange things going on, like family members of mine saw something and felt stuff in this house. So it really gravitates with me, this film. The story of this haunting in this house in London. And I do like the Warrens as a couple. Uh, Vera Farmiga, I think she's a fantastic actress. And yeah, some great jump scares. It's creepy. And I really like it. I really dug this one. And the best of the three Conjuring films for me. Yeah, fantastic stuff. And... Next up, I watched, good God, The Wedding Singer. Now, if you saw my haul from the weekend when I was away, I picked this up thinking James might want it, and he already had it, so he lumbered me with it, and it, it's actually worth a few quid, so I'm going to trade it in, but I thought I'll watch it first, and it was as, ter <laughs> as terrible as I thought it was going to be, if not worse. Good God. It's cr it's not so much crude, but it's lewd. Uh, not in a funny way. It's annoying. He annoys me. Sandler. It's boring. And probably the worst thing going for it, within five minutes I could have told you exactly how it's going to play out for the full go. I think it was close to two hours long. I paid too much for it at 50p. And Sandler can do good things. Punch Drunk Love and Uncut Gems. So why he spent his career banging out trash like this for his... And this is one of his better ones. This is one that people put up a pedestal as one of his good ones. And I have seen worse, I must admit, like his latest ones. His decline is like that, I believe. Yeah, they, they, these ain't for me. These stupid American comedies, and I'm sorry, Jim, for so long I'm picking on you guys. They're, they're just not for me. Absolute tribe. Easily the worst thing I watched this week. Uh, and I upward trajectory from there I went back into the Betty Davis set and the great lie and I've watched three from this set and they've all been terrific films this is about uh Davis his character uh she is involved with a look a love triangle with Mary Astor who was terrific in this as well and I think she won best supporting actress Oscar for it and well deserved she was fantastic in this as well and uh george brent now there's a love triangle go on in on this and he decides to go 
with Betty Davis's character in the end and settle down with her, but he's into aviation and that. And this is the early 40s and when they needed people to go up in the air because the war was impending, George goes off and his plane goes down and is feared dead. Now, while he's feared dead, uh, Davis's character discovers that Astor's character is expecting his baby. So what she does, she goes off somewhere really remote with Astor's character. The baby's given birth, giving birth to the baby and she pays Astor's character to forget the baby ever existed and she'll bring it up as the mother herself. Well, this is all going swimmingly well until uh, Brent's character is not really dead and he comes back. And then Astor's character wants to get involved and start playing a, life, a part in the baby's life. And yeah, really good film, really superbly acted. And Astor's character, she was horrible and you grew to absolute despise her, which just goes to show what a great job she was doing and how she won the supporting actress Oscar for it. Yeah, absolutely wonderful stuff. If I haven't spoiled the hell of it out of it and you're still interested in it, uh, give it a watch. I imagine it's probably on YouTube, free to watch. So, yeah, great. Really enjoying this Betty Davis box set. Then she's fast becoming a favourite actress of mine. That's another list I could do. Ten, top ten favourite actresses. That might be an idea. Yeah, great, great stuff. Uh, then I followed that up with... And soon the darkness, and again I really enjoyed this film. Uh, Nineteen seventy, I believe it came out. This was about two girls. They take a cycling holiday through France, and there's some wonderful cin cinematography, some beautiful scenes in it, uh, starring Pamela Franklin, who I haven't seen in anything else, but she did a really good job in this. She's a really great character in this. Uh, and Michelle Dutrice, who you may remember from as Betty from Some Mothers Do Have Them. Uh, now, James said I did the worst Scottish impression, so now I'll do the worst Frank and Spencer impression. Mm, Betty. But anyway, enough of that. Getting right on with it. Uh, the two girls, they have a disagreement and they go their separate ways. And in the meantime, Michelle Dutrice's character, she disappears. Uh, as she just gone AWOL or as something more sinister happened. And Franklin's character then tries to discover what's happened to her friend. And it's a real paranoiac trip because you don't know who's done it, who to trust. Uh, characters you think are trustworthy at one minute suddenly turn out not to be and vice versa. A really good edge-of-your-seat thriller that I thoroughly enjoyed and glad that I picked up and a worthy addition to my collection and one that I'll be watching again. Yeah, great stuff. I love these set, like late 60s, early 70s films, sort of the atmosphere in them. One of my favourite times in cinema history. Wonderful, wonderful film. And if that wasn't wonderful enough, the film of the week and the film for a long time, Larry kindly sent this over to me. John Ford, John Wayne, 1939 version of Stagecoach. And I had seen this before, but I think I watched it on Prime and it was absolutely dreadful transfer. They put you could fuzzy, you could hardly make what was going on or hear the dialogue. So really, it was like a first time watching. Wow, <laughs> what a wonderful Western. Uh, the characters in it, they're brilliant. You, it's an action film per se, but it's more of a character piece of these group of people who come together to take this stagecoach rides and they're all from different walks of life, all got different outlooks of life and how they play off each other and fall out and make friends and that I like better than the action bits of it. Just brilliant character driven filmmaking from John Ford and what a master he was. Um, Stars Andy Devine as well, who's one of my favourite character actors. Uh, he always he plays this tubby guy. Bit of a doofus character, but I really enjoy his work. If you go through his filmography, you'll see, you've probably seen him in quite a few films. And 
when it does get going with the Indians and the stagecoach, it's seminal action filmmaking. The amount of action films you can see that have taken things from this and work with it, the stunt work on it. Uh, Indiana Jones, the first one, off the top of my head, you can see heavy influences for that film from watching this. Brilliant, brilliant. Easily a five-star Western and right up there now with my favourite Westerns. I think there's a Criterion release of this that's probably an even better transfer and got wonderful special features. So if anybody does own that, let me know what it's like and what the special features are like because that's oh, blew me away. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Next up, and I followed that up with a bit of the Stavum. Now, I'm a secret between me and you. Don't tell anybody, but I think the Stathers is my favourite action action star. I just really like him. You can put aside your Stallones and your Schwarzeneggers and your Van Dams because Jason is the man for me. I just love his films, and this was no exception. Uh, he stars with this as Ben Foster. Statham's a hitman and he is given the job of killing his boss uh, played by Donald Sutherland who's sadly only in it for the start because he gets killed at the start by the Statham uh, which is a bit of a waste of his talents but there you go then it turns out that <coughs> the killing he performed was maybe not should have happened and he teams up with uh, Ben Foster, who was Sutherland's son, uh, and trains him to be a hitman and to get back at his own hitman firm for setting up the wrong hit against his friend. Who would have known people in the hitman firm couldn't have been trusted? Who Go figure. But yeah, really enjoyable action film, one that kept me engaged all the way through. I'd seen it before, but a long time ago. Statham is the man. And last for the week was it's Jason Statham in the Meg. There's a proper bromance going on here with me in the Statham, isn't there? But actually, the main reason I watched that, because I was putting that away, the me mecha mechanic back in the shelf, mech, M-E-C, and next door, by coincidentally, was the Meg. So I just thought, let's have a bit more Statham. And this one in his best, I'm afraid. Um, good concept. The Statham against a huge prehistoric shark but it's kind of dragged out and it gets a bit boring uh the action scenes that come about now and again they, they rescue it a little bit but i remember not liking it when i first watched it and it didn't improve very much for me yeah i just found it just a bit boring dragged out it's about two hours long which half hour too long it should have been an hour and a half long more shark and less nattering. Uh, not seen the Meg 2 and don't own a copy and I'm not really in a rush to watch it now, but you never know. If I see it cheap at a charity shop, I might pick it up and give it a go. But that's it for the week. A very mixed week. Some good stuff, some terrible stuff. But yeah, not too bad as a whole. So... Give me a like if you've liked what I've done here today. Maybe think about subscribing if you want to hear more of this nonsense. And I'll catch you guys in the week, I suppose. Let us know down below what you think of these watches. And I'll see you all later. ta -ra.